asked members of the Conservative Party for their thoughts following Liz Truss's keynote speech at the conference. I think we need to give um, Liz a chance. She uh, uh, laid out a vision for Britain. Uh, I think we can do it, but I'm not sure the two years is enough. I think she was determined. She showed us all what she's about, and I think she can do it. What I would say is give Liz a chance. She will come through. Well, that's what members of the Conservative Party thought, and, of course, it was members that voted her leader. But what about people who know and have worked with Liz Truss in government? We're joined now by former special adviser to Liz Truss, Kirsty Buchanan, and Conservative MP and former minister, Sir John Redwood. Good morning to both of you. Thank you for joining us. So, Kirsty, if we could come to you first, as somebody who has advised Liz Truss in the past, uh, I wonder what you made of her speech? Well, look, the speech was solid enough. It's about as good a speech as I've ever heard Liz Truss give, to be fair. Um, and, you know, the, the, the membership seemed to quite like it, but it's not the membership or the speech that's the problem. And frankly, the hard work for the Prime Minister wasn't in the hall. It's when she comes back to Westminster. What we've seen at the Conservative Party conference is a unprecedented and catastrophic collapse in party unity amongst her own MPs. We had open uh, re revolt and rebellion by cabinet ministers. The mood of MPs in the party is about as sulfurous as I've ever known. And if she missteps again now with the terrible intro that she's gotten, the awful winter we're all facing, mm. I'm not entirely sure that she's going to survive if she doesn't change tack, both in tone and, frankly, in substance in, in quite a lot of this. And, and bear in mind, we've yet to still see this medium and long-term plan for growth on which this entire problem was built when we had a, yeah. a mini budget where we had £43 billion pounds worth of unfunded tax cuts that has caused the problems we've seen over the last 10 days. Uh, I mean, clearly you know her. You've worked alongside her. If you say that was about the best speech you've ever seen her give and it was OK, it was hardly a ringing endorsement from you, um, is she capable of weathering this storm? You know her personally. Does she have a thick enough skin? Is she the right person to try and fix the, 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 the fissure that has appeared in the party? Uh, I mean, Liz is all, you know, she's resilient, she has a thick skin. I'm not entirely sure, though, resilience, determination and thick skin is what you need right now. Actually, I think that's probably going to make the situation worse. I read uh, one of her aides briefing out yesterday that when she came back, there was going to be iron discipline within the party. The last thing the party needs now is iron discipline, it needs a loving. What she needs to do is get to Chequers, get to Downing Street, bring in groups of MPs, start to explain her medium and long-term plan for growth and secure some buy-in. Because you have to bear in mind that she was not elected by the majority of these MPs. She might be popular within the membership of the party, but she is not popular at the moment with the MPs. She um, needs to rule by consensus. What went wrong then? I mean... It's one month to the day, but, of course, it's actually, in reality, a lot less because there was a pause for the passing of the Queen in the morning of that. Um, how did she make such a muck-up so early <laughs> on? Is this typical? Is this... Uh, was there something in the behaviour when you worked for it that it expected this? I think some of this is about... Look, she is a bright and capable woman, and I know a lot of the people that are working at Number 10, they are all very bright, very clever. But if you want to say... Siri, show me the dangers of groupthink. It's, I think it's what we've seen over the last few weeks, which is an organisation of people who think the same about how markets work, think the same, you know, politically. There's nobody in the room that challenges them. They're all bright policy people, but it's a bit like policy by Petri dish, if you like. No one has thought about the real world impact of, of some of the measures that we've seen announced, the high borrowing, the, the unfunded tax cuts and what that might do to the market. And actually what it did to the market was spooky to such an extent that people have gone from being worried about how they're heating their homes to now facing real problems paying for their homes because interest rates have, have risen as a consequence of them spooking the market. So they need some more people in there who are who speak, if you like, fluent human and are less clever and more kind of in touch with what things feel like on the okay. ground for, for people. Well, let's, be, let's put some of those points to uh, Sir John Redwood. Um, no one is thinking about the real world impact. We need people that speak 
real human, uh, Sir John. I wonder sort of what you make of what Kirsty's suggesting, because it feels like that, you know, what we've seen happen since the fiscal statement, the mini budget last Friday, the, the, the chaos in the markets has had a huge impact on the daily lives of everybody in the country. The speech was very good because it directly identified with all the feelings that many people have in this country uh, about how they want access to health care uh, more promptly, um, how they want the economy to avoid recession, how they want to have uh, enough of the money that they earn uh, to spend on their own priorities and to tackle the cost of living. Uh, I think what happened in, in the last couple of weeks uh, is that there was a very nasty sell-off in bonds around the world, led by the United States of America, raising interest rates and saying they're going to tighten and toughen much more. And there was a big flight into the dollar out of a whole range of currencies. And then in the UK, at exactly that moment, just one day before the Chancellor spoke, the Bank of England said on top of it all that it was going to start selling some of its great pile of bonds and the market immediately said, well, this is dreadful. Uh, uh, if the Bank of England think the bonds are too, uh, are too dear and they want to sell them, they want to drive interest rates up much more, uh, we're going to make that happen big time. And so there was that miscalculation on the Thursday over the bond selling which then threatened people's mortgages. And so why, why didn't the Chancellor the react to that to then, the Sir John? Problem. Sir John Redwood, if that happened the day before and that was already in the works, why did the Chancellor not react to that rather than throwing oil on the fire and, and stoking it even further? Well, because he was putting forward the first third of a very ambitious growth plan, the, the tax side. We also need to see the spending side, the sooner the better. And we need to see all the supply side measures, new investments, joint ventures and so forth to increase the capacity of the economy. The sooner that's rolled out, the better. But he couldn't suddenly change his announcement on the Friday because of what the Bank of England has said on the Thursday. Uh, but then the bank, of course, had to do a, a huge U-turn the following Wednesday when it realised its policy had been deeply damaging. And instead of selling bonds, it then said it would start buying bonds again, mm. which isn't really what we want them to be doing. Uh, so there uh, was a very big monetary incident. And, of course, the Bank of England is independent uh, on money supply and interest rates. John, two things, really. One, the polls are disastrous. I mean, Labour are now in the same position they were and haven't been since the late 90s when, of course, they won by a landslide. So the polls look bad. Is that, in your view, a sea change where people have moved away from the Conservatives or a blip? And secondly, um, has it ever worked, trickle-down economics in a country's history that you know? Well, on your first point, nobody knows. Um, we Conservatives uh, trust that it will be turned around quite quickly. I think it all hinges on the economic policy. It's about whether... Uh, in the run-up to the election in a couple of years' time, people are feeling better off and see that the growth plan is working and we've avoided a long and nasty recession of the kind that um, various countries are going to experience thanks to central bank mistakes and economic policy mistakes elsewhere. Uh, if that can be very clearly going in the right direction, that the growth strategy is working, then I, I think conservatives have a fairly good chance of winning the election. I don't accept we're doing trickle-down economics. Uh, what we're doing is, is growth economics mm. at a time when we've got to both fight inflation and recession. Yeah. Extremely difficult thing to do. So if it works, uh, but I do people, think the government the is right return. that inflation is going to come down over the next two years. Indeed, the Bank of England, who's responsible, say it's going to come down dramatically over the next two years. So we need to concentrate mm. much more on making sure that we have some growth to offset the, the clear deflationary forces. They were right to say to people, you're struggling with your energy bills, we're going to put a lot of money into helping you with that. They were right to say to people, you're paying too much tax, we want you to go to yeah. work, we want you to keep enough of your earnings. That is all very popular and sensible uh, sets of proposals. I'm not sure if I heard there where you think it has worked. Has it, has it worked for the poorest, the middle incomes, trickle-down economics? Well, I just told you it's not trickle-down economics. But, yes, there are many well, cases where, where going for tax cuts has generated more revenue and more growth. And we, we've seen some very good examples of that in the United States of America under Reagan, for example, 
uh, in the United Kingdom un under Margaret Thatcher. And the first two years of her economic policy were conventional treasury orthodoxy and, and were not at all helpful. Uh, but then in the middle period, uh, with Nigel Lawson as chancellor, okay. there were big tax cuts and the tax revenue soared from the rich and the economy grew. OK. All right. And then, of course, it went wrong. But that, I guess, is economics, well, isn't it? That's economics for you. That right. Good to speak to both. the European system, which was a disaster okay. because it was boom, boom, bust economics based on uh, the wrong kind of money policy. Again, it was a Bank of England failure, which the government had encouraged. Okay.